Uh, start taking callers here. We've got uh, Carlos in Lima. How are you? Oh my gosh, how are you guys? Greetings here from South America. All right, we're doing well. I'm glad the, the phone line reaches the world. Yeah, yeah, I'm here um, on the computer and I uh, just want to start saying that you guys are awesome. I mean, I've been hearing you for about, let's say, a year. And uh, you know what? My, my father's a pastor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I grew up uh, as a, well, kind of gave my life to Jesus when I was like 12. I really felt it, you know, I went up and everything. And yeah. uh, when I went to college, I started downing things, you know, and uh, I really felt bad, you know. I started crying just because I was doubting Jesus. It, just, it was such a horrible time. I, I thought that I was going to go to hell, but more than that, I just thought that, I mean, I was doing something wrong. Yeah, there's a, there's a guilt cycle imposed there where they set expectations that you can't live up to, and when you start to doubt or start to fail, you immediately feel guilty that there's something wrong with you. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and and at, at church, you know, I started making questions, and people just got really angry, you know, and people started just t telling me, "Well, are you angry with God? What's your intention here? Uh, you're you have some sin in you," and I was like, "What?" What's wrong here? I'm just asking questions, and you're not giving me answers. Yep. So, uh, right now, I'm I'm in that phase. I'm I'm okay with myself. I'm I'm with peace. I I can talk to my father now. We we sometimes argue, you know. He he gets kind of angry sometimes, but we do talk about it. But I just had some questions for you, uh, Matt. Um, I want to talk first about the Big Bang. Okay. okay? Um, as as I understand, and please correct me because I think that you might know a little bit more. It's kind of like an explosion or an expansion that was created by a singularity. Am I right there? That's yeah. that's probably close enough for what we need to talk about. Just, okay, and according to the theory of relativity, time and space had a finite beginning. This is from some studies from Hawkins and and Ellis, I think, that that was published in 16, uh, 1970. Yeah, there's, there's, so first of all, um, when it comes to things like Big Bang cosmology, yeah. what we're talking about when we talk about science is not a pronouncement of truth. It's not a declaration that X happened and we have proved it and this is necessarily true. What science is doing is building models that describe reality based uh, as best as we can based on the information that we currently have. And so when you have something like uh, the Big Bang, which you can't directly observe, we don't have a time machine, um, I, I'm, there are differing opinions about whether or not you, it is right to consider that time began there or whether we're talking about a local presentation of time or our local universe. But since we don't have a time machine, so far as I'm aware, the way that we go about investigating to confirm that our model of, of the Big Bang is accurate is to look for the observations we would expect if it were true, things like the cosmic microwave background radiation. And so the model makes a prediction about what we would see when we view that uh, cosmic microwave background radiation. And then when we are able to actually test and observe that, we can determine if it's consistent with the model. And so far, um, it's consistent with the model. And so okay, okay. the view the view from science is that, you know, Big Bang cosmology is confirmed or as confirmed as we can right now. That doesn't mean that in the future we might get more information that puts a new spin on it so that our understanding of what happened with regard to universal origins will change. And what tends to happen though is that we you you reach certain points where you can refine and improve this model, but it's absurdly unlikely that you will overturn it completely, that you will find that you were fundamentally wrong about everything. Because all it is is, here are observations, here are predictions about observations, do they match? Okay. If, if okay. it were really but, wrong, we'd know yeah. already. Yeah, go okay, ahead. But, okay, so, so following the Hubel's law and, and what I think it was Wilson said about, you know, the, the thermal radiation, okay, and they got a Nobel Prize. So following that thought, Singularity, when it started, it didn't appear in space because space didn't exist. It's because there was no space. So my question is, where, where, what did that singularity or where did it appear in if there was no space, there was no time, there was no matter? So you're going to say it probably, I don't know, and, and, and I think that's a valid answer. But, I mean, <laughs> it's something that is completely outside of anything that we can test. So, so, so one of the things is that 
you know, and, and I will happily say, I don't know. And I'm not necessarily okay. convinced that anybody knows or ha has right. a, a good explanation for this, except that when we talk about um, the Big Bang, the, the essential immediate expansion of the universe, um, it didn't have to, it's, it's, it, it is space. It is matter and space, and it is space expanding. And so you're kind of asking the question of, well, what is space expanding into? And we don't know, but it may not be that there's any requirement that it's expanding into anything if it's the sum total of everything. But models like uh, the, the multiverse offer uh, different views on this. And I think this is you know, one of those questions that I definitely couldn't explain to you and don't have a good answer for. So you're calling the wrong okay, show no, there. No, Call no. Sean Carroll or, or an actual uh, no, astrophysicist. No, but but that's, not, that's not my my point. My, okay. my point is that this singularity, which we are not, I, I'm not going to get any answers here, but which let's say that, let, let's follow those, those models, uh, didn't happen in a time or space because as we said before, time and space had a beginning. This sing singularity, it, it sounds like kind of a god w which is outside completely of of, of any testing because because we can't make. How does it sound? It. How does it? How does it sound like a god? I mean, okay. because what you're what you're basically saying there is, hey, there's this proposal that a magical, untestable, unfalsifiable being who exists outside of space time produced this event, and and then you're saying what we observe is consistent with that. But if the proposition is unfalsifiable, it is useless. Mm -hmm. You have no grounds by which to determine if it's possible or if it's probable or to calculate any kind of probabilities about it. The thing about you know, Big Bang cosmology uh, and anything else within science is that these propositions are falsifiable. If the Big Bang model had made predictions about the microwave background radiation and then we observe it and it's not consistent with it, then we would have de demonstrated that our model is in fact wrong. There's no way to do that with a god, and so, or anything supernatural, and so at most all you're ever saying is, "Yep, this this you know thing that has been described would be doing would be capable of it." Well, so would universe creating pixies, uh, and any number of things. Plus, we don't even know enough to know about what could possibly have done this, or if it was inevitable. I know, but what I'm saying is that it is one of the possibilities that. that no, 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 no. It is. It is a philosophical po possibility in the sense that you can't prove that it's not a possibility. But that doesn't make it an epistemic possibility. That doesn't mean that we have good reason to think that this is actually possible. I mean, we could say that it's philosophically possible for me to sprout wings and fly out of the studio. And, and we're only saying that in the sense that we can't prove that it's impossible. But when we talk about whether or not it is uh, an epistemic possibility that we have any good reason to think this thing could happen, we have no good reason to think that I could ever sprout wings and fly out of the studio. Okay, just, just to close my my uh, my view on that, it just sounds to me to me because because it's kind of like a personal thing that just to think that something had to happen without time or space. Sure. So this ha this had to this singularity. How many other? How many other things can you imagine that could meet that criteria as well? No, that, that's the thing. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, so, I mean would, you would you at least accept that there are other things that you could imagine, like universe creating pixies? But wouldn't that mean that there is matter? I mean, to exist? No, pi pix to pixies, exist are matterless and pixies are matterless and exist outside of space-time. And without time, space, without gravity? Yeah, I mean, all you're doing is saying, in order for this to happen, what seems to be most consistent with it is something that is not tied to space-time produced this effect, which is already a problem because cause and effect requires time. So even the discussions about it are problematic. But I understand the idea that, oh, this God proposal, uh, for me, uh, this seems like a plausible explanation. Can but how many more plausible explanations are there, and how did you determine which of those you're going to accept? Can I come at this uh, from a different angle? Um, sure. Nearly every time this this cosmology stuff comes up in in a atheism 
discussion. It's it's some sort of argument from ignorance. Is oh, if the atheist doesn't know how the exactly how the universe came to be, then there that must open the door for God. And uh, and the you know the the real question is what evidence is there for a God? And and let's look at that. And and the time to believe in a God is when there's sufficient evidence for it. And yeah, there's all sorts of scientific mysteries. You know, you can go look at the quantum stuff, or you can go look at the cosmology stuff, or you can go look at the complexity of the brain, or whatever. You can find all sorts of mysteries. But that that that's not evidence for a God. That's just evidence that we don't know everything about everything. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, this, this, that's where we are. And, and uh, as we learn more, we, we you know, chip away at this God of the gaps thing. But it sounds like somebody somewhere has t accepted the burden of proof to say, oh, if, if I don't know how the universe came to be, then, then your God thing gets a free pass. Uh, and, and I don't buy that. Okay, my, my intention was, was not proving that there is a God because of that. It was just that it is a possibility for many people. Now, ha, no, 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 no. This idea that no, something is a like a personal thing. That, like a personal okay, thing. people may think it's a possibility, but how did they determine that it's possible? So it's impossible that there be a god. No, I'm not so saying it's, it's impossible. I'm saying if you're claiming that it's possible that there's a god who exists outside of space and time, how did you determine that that is actually possible? Because it's not impossible. No, 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 no. The fact that we haven't okay. demonstrated that something is conclusively impossible doesn't mean that it's actually epistemically possible. Okay. I agree on, on your answer. Um, I have one more question. So, so okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. That, that's fine. I we mean, can move on. <laughs> I'm not stubborn. <laughs> if, I mean, I know what you want to say, and, and okay, that's, that's all right for, for now. Okay. I would have to look into it more. Um, well, here's, here's an example that I used the other day that may make this a little more clear. Um, there are two detectives that are called in to work on a case, and they walk in, and it's a closed room, and there's a dead body in the middle of the room, and everything was locked and sealed from the inside. One of the detectives is, uh, you know, doesn't buy into anything supernatural because there's been no demonstration that the supernatural is possible. There's been no demonstration that it is a, a, a actual or that it is, could be a plausible explanation for this. The other detective does buy into supernatural claims and thinks that it's possible for someone to walk through a wall simply because you can't demonstrate that it's impossible for some, someone to walk through a wall. Now, those two detectives are going to go about solving that case and every other case that is similar or can be derived from that in two completely different ways. Which one is more likely to come up with the right answer? Hmm. Well, okay, I'll, I'll have to listen to that again on, on video because it cut a little bit, but. Okay, sorry okay. about that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. All right, well, we, so, uh, we appreciate wait, the call, wait, especially you uh, holding wait, on so I, long. I have one, one more question, just one okay. more uh, you said that it, everything that you believe in is because you have proof. Is that correct? Um, my goal is to not believe anything without good reason. Uh, I mean, I'm not quite sure what you mean by proof. Um, so, and yeah. it's not necessarily impossible that I might believe things more of without a goal good reason. Than, than a, you know, something that's always. <laughs> I mean, if somebody can show me that I believe something and I shouldn't, that I don't have good reasons for it, then I stop believing it. Not that you don't have reasons, but if you believe in something without having proof, like like for instance, what do you mean by proof? If you have a wife, do do you have a wife? I think you're married. Yes. Yes, I have a wife. Okay. Does she love you? Um, I don't know. Oh, come on, man. I, I, I'm being. I'm. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not. No. I'm You're being. Just, I, no. On, would man. you let you? Do, no, all right. Let me finish. It's okay. Valentine's Day. Let me finish come because. On. Let me finish. <laughs> Stop. Stop and let me finish because you don't know the first damn thing about my relationship. I may actually not think my wife loves me. Do you want me to answer your questions honestly? <laughs> hey, but don't get angry, man. I'm just. Angry. I'm. I'm angry because I'm trying to explain something and everybody keeps talking. <laughs> Yeah, you asked, anger, do I believe that my wife loves me? And I said, I don't know. And I was going to continue before I was interrupted by the laughter. It depends on what you mean. I can tell you this. My wife tells me that she loves me. 
and she acts in ways which are consistent with her loving me. I can't read her mind to know what she actually thinks about me, and so the only information that I have to go on, I evaluate that. And both of those things, those are observations that I make, which are consistent with observations I would make from someone who loves me. So, so I am convinced the that the most probable, right I'm convinced that the most probable explanation for my wife acting as if she loves me and telling me that she loves me is that it's more likely that she actually does love me. I don't it's know anything, like I'm not claiming anything absolutely certain, and I so acknowledge that I could be wrong. My belief is proportional to the evidence for it. Uh, Don, what, what about you? Does your wife or husband love you? Yes, as far as I know. Okay. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. I think there we have an answer. Okay, so, but there's no proof that he does, right? Well, I could give the same there's... sorts of evidence that Matt just gave, right? That, yeah, that but, I, but that, it's I not have proof, some, that I have. This is why evidence. I've asked you right. four times. What do you mean by proof? But, because he, Don just Don just gave you evidence, or, or cited that he could give the same evidence, and your response is, "But it's not proof." What is it that you consider proof, and are you appealing to absolute certainty? Because yeah. you cannot have any proof for that, right? You couldn't have proof. For Would you answer the question when you say you can't have the proof? What do you mean by proof, and are you appealing to absolute certainty? Okay, let's appeal to absolute certainty then. You're, you're appealing, so yeah. you want, you're asking, are we absolutely certain that our spouses love us? None of us claim to have Then the my answer is anything. no, because I don't think you can be absolutely certain about anything. And if the only so proof, and, and, if, and, if, and if you let me finish my sentence, and if your position is that we can't believe anything until we have proof that amounts to absolute certainty, then you have just done away with all knowledge. Okay, well, I just wanted a simple answer because of the conversation. I'm sorry, because, I'm sorry, but all, not all questions know, know, have know, simple answers. And it is the desire for a simple answer that is screwing you up. No, it's not screwing me up. I'm just asking a question. You're getting all angry. No, no, no. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> Oh, first of all, first of all, I'll calm down whenever I want to. The the issue here is that you keep saying, "Can you prove it? Can you prove it? You can't prove it," and you avoid it. You avoid it. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. Jesus, you keep interrupting me. I'll put you on hold. You kept saying, "Can you hold?" I know you can still hear me because we tested this. You keep saying. Can you prove it? Can you prove it? You can't prove it. And you, every time I'd ask you, what do you mean by proof and is an appeal in absolute certainty, it took forever to get you to acknowledge this. You, if you think that there is a pathway to absolute certainty, I am happy to hear it. I don't know how you can get there. I don't think that it's remotely relevant. And whether or not a belief is rationally justified, I don't even care whether or not it counts as knowledge. I certainly don't care if it counts as certainty. And philosophers will tell you that knowledge doesn't require certainty. The most conventional definitions of knowledge are justified true belief. There's nothing necessarily certain about it. But if your position is that absolute certainty is attainable and that no beliefs are rationally justified until that, that's a case that you need to make. My position is I don't see any path to absolute certainty and I don't care because it doesn't matter. Because what determines whether or not a belief is rational is whether it is supported by evidence. And as we learned from Hume, the wise man apportions his belief to the evidence. You are convinced of the truth of a proposition in proportion to the supporting evidence. And that's why if I don't think the evidence leads to absolute certainty, I cannot be absolutely certain, but I can still be convinced and justifiably so. Did that make sense? Okay, now, can I speak now? That's why okay. I asked a question and took you off hold. Okay, thank you. I, I didn't know that. Well, how, how, I, how I would answer that question, I mean, I kind of understand what you're getting to with, with the absolute thing, but how, how I would answer it would, would, would be this way with, with just anybody who's talking in the street. It would be, if I love my wife, I, I would say yes, and if I know that she loves me, I would say yes, although I have no proof of it, right? But I choose to believe that because of the things that she does. No, you don't choose so to believe. Well, that's not, well. That that's my opinion. Okay. okay. I completely. Do. So, so you okay. think you can okay. just choose to believe something? I do. 
In that case, I do because there's no way that I can know that she loves me. Okay, well, this is a you, you this is a colloquialism. Okay, so, so, so don't don't make too much of it, Matt. Well, it, it's wrong. Yeah, I will exactly. make much of it because it's wrong. <laughs> okay. We don't choose beliefs. Beliefs aren't the, aren't an act of volition. Belief when you believe something, it simply means that you accept that it's true or likely true. And your belief in it is the result of becoming convinced. It is not the result of, okay, I'm going to believe this. There's no, there's not only no reason to think that an act of volition is how beliefs result. There is good evidence that it cannot result that way. That in fact your brain reaches a conclusion long before you're ever consciously aware of it. And then the rest when of your you brain goes and likely. rationalizes it. <laughs> yeah. When I say when that, you what? Say that it's likely. Likely, it's likely that's that's, yes. that's how I feel. It's likely, it's possible, right? But yeah. There's a possibility that that she doesn't love me. Yes. But I'm saying that, but but when I say she does love me, just just, just like you say, because you told me that she does love you, it's because you're making a decision to make that claim, although you might be wrong, right? Because I be fully, wrong. I've already said this. I fully acknowledge that I could be wrong. This is what I'm saying is, this is what my belief is, and my the level to which I'm convinced of it is proportional to the evidence supporting it. Okay. And your response was, yes. well, you can't prove it. And, and it was an appeal to absolute certainty. And the answer to that is, okay. what difference does that make? We can't be absolutely certain about anything. I'm not saying that makes a difference. I'm just saying that you can't prove. I'm, I'm just saying, just follow my, my logic. What so, difference does it make whether or not I can prove it? This is the point that I... To make, but can can you allow me to finish my my point instead of interrupting me? Just let let me finish, and then you can hang up and, and continue with your. I problem. can hang up right now. I asked a question. Gosh, Matt, what a guy. Okay. Okay. Bye. Can I? Sorry, I don't know how many other ways to explain it, and I don't know why it's so difficult to drag an answer out when you're making assertions about well, you can't prove it. What difference does it make if you say proof is? I, a way to attain absolute certainty. And my position is, I don't see any way to attain absolute certainty on anything. Well, colloquially, atheists are act, asking for a proof of God, right? But we're, no, what uh, we're really asking no, for is, okay. what evidence do you have? And let's examine the evidence and you know, let's throw out the bad evidence and see what else you got. You know, um, that's, what, that's what we're really asking. But yeah. colloquially, it's prove that there's a God because I don't believe it. Um, so well, when you're asking someone to prove something, my context is not saying, are you absolutely certain? I don't, I, don't, I don't equate prove with absolute certainty. I tend to not use the word anyway. I ask why, yeah, give word, me the reasons, the give me the evidence. That, that we don't want, right? But even when I do use the word, I'm not using it for absolute certainty, which is why I wanted to get to the difference between what we view for proof. Mm -hmm. Because if your entire thing is to say, ah, you can't be absolutely certain about that, my response is, I agree. So what? Yeah, I mean, we've said that very clearly several times. Yeah. From the get-go. Mm -hmm.